Okay, so we're going to work another example involving predicting radical halogenation products. And in this case, we're going to look at chlorination products, monochlorination products specifically. And remember that chlorination, while selective, still results in some abstraction of primary, pro primary hydrogens. So keep that in mind when we're going to work these problems. So let's say butane were reacted with chlorine under conditions conditions uh, that would result in a reaction. So either high temperature or irradiation with UV light. So let's say let's say this mixture were irradiated what products could what 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 products could we expect if we were not concerned with the relative percentages of the products so we could get chlorination at at this carbon c1 that would be equivalent to having chlorination at c4 right so this would be one possible product Alternatively, we could get chlorination at C2. Well, that would be equivalent to getting chlorination at C3. So the other possible product is this one. Between the two, we've accounted for all the possible products because there are only two types of hydrogens, the primary, the terminal primary, primary hydrogens, and uh, these two internal secondary hydrogens okay let's say the alkane were pentane instead of butane so we have an extra CH2 group here or I should say an additional CH2 group here and this mixture were irradiated as well Oh, well, what you'd get here is you could you could have substitution at one of these terminal carbons here. You could have substitution at either carbon two or four, which would be equivalent. These are secondary carbons, or you could have substitution at this secondary carbon, which is carbon three. So you'll get three possible products in this instance. So this is one product. This is another product here. It's going to write CH2 twice in CH3. Alternatively, you could get chlorination at this carbon here. So this is the this is the third possible product. Okay, say say instead of pentane we had three methyl pentane. So say we had this compound here well here there there's a number of possibilities so we could have chlorination at, at each of these at either of these terminal carbons here right and these are both equivalent or we could have chlorination at each of these two carbons here and those would be equivalent as well we could have chlorination at this tertiary carbon here or at this primary carbon and remember this primary carbon is is not equivalent to these two primary carbons here because this is this is one away one carbon away from the branch point while these two 
carbons on the outsides are two carbons away from the branch point. So there are four possibilities here. And let's say we just heated this instead of irradiating it. So we could get, we could get So we could get chlorination at C1. This would be equivalent to getting chlorination at C5 here. We could get chlorination at C2 or C4. So write out that possibility there. So this is also possible. We could also get chlorination at this tertiary carbon here. I should say this one. Uh, so that's another possibility. And finally, we could get chlorination at this methyl carbon here, and uh, that would be substitution of one of these methyl hydrogens for chlorine. So that's what would result in that instance. Okay, last last example. Let's say Let's say we had methyl cyclopentane instead. You, you again, you want to think how many distinct types of hydrogens are there here? And let's say this mixture were irradiated. Well, you have you have four secondary carbons here, right? But this carbon. I'll just label I'll label this I'll label this C2 we'll say this is C1 this is C3 C4 C5 and we'll call this C6 so C2 and C5 are equivalent secondary carbons because they're one carbon away from this methyl group C3 and C4 are equivalent secondary carbons because they're two carbons each is two carbons away from this methyl group or from the branch point here. C6 is one carbon away and uh, the, the, these, uh, these hydrogens here are equivalent. And carbon 1 is your tertiary carbon. So it seems like you have four distinct types of carbons and to accompany each one of those distinct types of carbons you have four distinct types of hydrogens. So you'll have four distinct products. So you could get chlorination here at this methyl carbon, so substitution for one of those methyl hydrogens. That would be the product that would result from that. Turn, alternatively, you could get chlorination at this tertiary carbon. And of any hydrogen abstraction, remember this one, abstraction of this hydrogen here is really the most likely so that's another possibility you could get hydrogen hydrogen abstraction and successive chlorination at either of these two carbons So both are equivalent, so I don't have to I don't have to include this as an additional possibility because this is the same thing as this. And finally I could get chlorination at either of these two carbons. So 
at either C3 or C4. Okay, and that does it for this problem. In the next video, we'll take a quick look at what would happen if we were to, instead of chlorinate each of these alkanes, we were to brominate them. How would that change the product distribution?